welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Dr. Donald Pelto, and today I have Dr. Chris Titko here, and she is a podiatrist. And today we're going to talk about referrals and things that you're passionate and what excites you. Chris, thank you for joining the show. My pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, so right now we're in the midst of, of COVID. We're not going out. That's why we're doing this uh, via Zoom. But I want to talk to you today about what you're passionate about. I know you're passionate about uh, building your a successful practice and the latest technologies and things like that. So you've been in practice for how many years? And, and tell me how this has evolved. This is my 25th year in practice. Uh, when I started, I joined my father's practice and we had three offices at the time. And then we grew and grew until we had 13 offices and eight doctors working for us. And it just got to be ridiculously large. And about 10 years ago, I went back to school and got my MBA degree and went solo mm -hmm. and uh, kept two of the offices uh, and been growing ever since. That's great. That's great. And uh, so we're going to go through a couple of questions. Uh, we're talking specifically, uh, Chris, today about referrals. And as we were talking a little bit before, you said that the, the way referrals are done have changed a little bit over the last 25 years. But in this period right now, when we're recording this, who are your top three referral sources? I would say by far, my first is social media. That's Google. That's the internet. Uh, that's my website. I would say it's fair to, I don't have exact numbers, but probably a good 60% of my referrals come from there. Mm -hmm. And then I have about 20% of my referrals come from a, a local magazine that I advertise in. And then I have another 10% or so come from the Chamber of Commerce uh, that I'm involved in uh, and primary care docs. Okay. So probably about in that order, primary care doctors. Oh, wow. And, and so let's, it's always best to start with the biggest. And so let's talk about your presence in social media. Uh, what are the success? How has it ramped up? Have you always been good at it? Have you, has there been a learning <laughs> curve? Did you do it initially? I know you had someone doing it now. So tell me the story. So I'm horrible at electronics, right? Like this is my first Zoom meeting and You're I don't even great. know, you know, thank you for walking me through it. Um, you know, it's not my thing. My, my brother is a computer guru and I have completely other different skills. Uh -huh. So I realized that more people were getting, I mean, I do Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that personally, but from a social standpoint and putting together a website and putting together blogs and things that people want to learn about through podiatry, uh, is not, not my forte to make it look professional. So I hired a company to do my social media for me. Uh, they do a great job. I really like my website. It's come a long way in the past 12 years. Uh, I would say it's about how long we've had a website mm -hmm. and, uh, we, we get a lot of hits through there. My, my social media guru does a lot of, uh, search optimization for me. She does online ad something or other click for something, click for pay or mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, she does, uh, you know, she asks me for a budget each month. How much do I want to spend on uh, Facebook advertising, et cetera. So we talk that out and she modifies my um, website as needed. You know, obviously with the COVID situation, we wanted to let everybody know we remained open. So we did that. She helps me send out blast uh, emails to my patients as well to let them, you know, contact, connect with them, stay connected with them. Uh, she helps me send out emails and blogs about new services that I'm offering. Okay. And then we meet face to face. She and I meet face to face once a month just to make sure we're online and that we're getting the connections we want and where do we need to alter our advertising dollars. Yeah. And then in, in terms of the, all this content that's being produced, do you produce it? Do you just kind of give her some ideas and she researches and ghostwrites it or how does that happen? Yeah, she pretty much, I give her the, here's what I want to say, or I'll give her uh, a short blurb mm -hmm. and she'll make it look all fancy and uh, add some, some, you know, for me, I'm all technical and I have, I know what I want to say from a technical standpoint, but I have to remember that the reader isn't a podiatrist, isn't a doctor, may not have the same experiences and background as I have. So she kind of makes it more person friendly. Yeah. And that's easy for me to do one-on-one -on -one in office with my patients, but it's not easy for me to do in writing. I'm more analytical when I'm writing. So yeah. she makes things more personable on, okay. in writing. 
Well, while we're talking, I'm sure everyone's curious and they're probably going to want to Google your, your, your website. What's your website for those that are curious right now? Centerforfootcare.com. Centerforfootcare.com. Great. That's pretty mm -hmm. easy. And so it, it really sounds like you have a, a, a person that, that helps you really look good and bring in a lot of this return on investment for those that are young doctors thinking, you know, uh, Chris, I just don't have money to do this. How much is it going to cost me? Um, tell, tell us a little bit about that, what your thoughts are. I say if you have the skills, especially in the younger crowd, I could probably hire just about any 20 year old or teenager to do what she does, you know, to some extent. And I think if you're younger, you're more experienced, you've grown up with computers. I just did not grow up with computers. Uh, but I think that a lot of people can do that on their own. And it, mm -hmm. it's, of course it's cheaper if you can do it on your own. And, and that's really where people, patients are really connecting through the internet. You know, they're looking up everything, Dr. Google, right? Dr. Google this, everybody's, looking up that by the time they come to my office they already know what they have or they think they know what they have right yeah uh, and so I think that if you have the technology to do that yourself and can reach out on social media whether it's Twitter or Facebook to your own patients and potential patients mm -hmm. all the better but yeah but you also have to decide if you have time for that you see I don't have time for that I don't have time to learn it I don't want to make the time to learn it I want to spend my time treating patients yeah. So I want to get help from others who can do a j the job that I'm not educated to do. Yeah, that, that's great. I think using other people is key. Um, in, in terms of, you said it's changed though. Let's go back 25 years ago. Um, yeah. who, who were your referral sources and, it, and it's changed and, and you had to adapt? Yeah, so for when I started practice, even though I joined my father, it was very clear from day one that I, I want to build my own practice. I didn't want to be on his shirt tails. I didn't want any of that. So every day I went out and I met a primary care doctor every morning, every lunch break, and every day at the end of my day. So I, I reserved three times throughout my day, every day to meet a primary care doc. And I would, and I did this for the first six months of my practice. Now, after six months, when I started getting busy, I would go out and meet docs every, uh, I'd say every morning and every evening. And then eventually after about eight or nine months, I would go out once, uh, once or twice a week and just go face to face and knock on their doors and give them a call. Hey, can I meet Dr. Jones on Tuesday at four o'clock? Uh, and let them see my face, let them you know, hear about what I treat, do a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. I don't want to take their business from them, but if they're treating something that they can't resolve, I'm here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I had so many primary care docs um, respond positively to that face to face meeting. I think I think give them a feeling of confidence, get, you know, and, and following that, you know, courtesy is send them a follow up letter, contact them. Thanks for your time, et cetera. But when I would see a patient from them, equally important is to send a note to the primary care doc saying, hey, here's how I'm taking care of your patient. I want to keep you in the loop. I want to keep you educated. I want to let you know your patient's doing well or having this issue. Uh, here's what we're doing for the patient, for your patient. And that just grew into more and more referrals as they felt like I knew what I was doing, could see the results of what I was doing. And, and I required that of all of my docs that I hired when we were building mm. our practice, every doc that came in had to go out and do the footwork. I don't want to build their practice for them. They need to build their own practice. So they would go out and meet the primary care docs, follow up. Um, nowadays, we have a lot of um, managed care. We have large hospital systems owning physicians and owning specialists. And so that's why my referral base for my primary care docs is so much less now, because I'm not a part of a group. I'm not a part of a hospital system. I don't want to be a part of a hospital system. Mm. Uh, so... Um, if you are within a hospital system, kudos for you, if you can get the referrals from the docs within that, that hospital system. Yeah. But for those who aren't, it's perfectly normal and perfectly successful if you go out and do the footwork and pound the pavement and meet people. Uh, keeping in mind these younger docs coming into practice who I love to see, I love seeing that. Some of the older docs they wanna to touch base with may not be social media savvy, may not wanna do the old online meeting or texting. They might want that face-to-face, -face, warm shake of the hand connection. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I, I think even for today, for young doctors that are getting out there, those, those are great, great tips. Can you, now this, let's talk about even outsourcing. Can you outsource setting up these appointments or did you call yourself to, do they respond differently to you than maybe you're, have you tried using an office assistant? Yeah. So when I started, of course, I had no money, so I didn't have any staff helping me. So uh, I did that all myself. I would call them, uh, call the doctor's office manager, ask to speak with the office manager, and then make that connection through the office manager, set up that meeting. And then as time went on and I got an office manager in my own office to make those calls, I did find it was harder for her to get through. Mm -hmm. Um which doesn't seem fair or right, but that's just how it was. So I went back to doing it myself because I wanted it to be productive, right? I wanted to make those connections. So um, I was finding, even when I would have my office manager go out to the physical locations to meet, she was treated like a drug rep, you know, appointment for next July, you know, uh, we'll see you then. And, and that, that, that wasn't what I needed. I needed instant results. So that meant me doing it myself. Now, the two options, could I just go to them one at a time without calling before and just saying, hey, I'm so-and-so, or is it better to call and make an appointment in your opinion? I always called and made an appointment because I don't know what their schedule is. And I certainly don't want to show up and there's no one at the office. And I don't want to show up at the office and there's no one to talk to because they're with patients. I don't want them to feel rushed or interrupted. So I would always call and make an appointment. Great. Well, I think that's great advice. And I think it's even, even helpful for today, today. Um, I think so. if, if you can do it and we have a similar situation here in Massachusetts where some are group practices, but even I find the group practices, their patients are finding you online and they want to come see you and not the doctor or they want a second opinion. A lot of times are you, cause you like you, you mentioned a lot about uh, up-to-date technology that a lot of the groups might not have. Are you finding people seeking you out for that technology and just what technology are you liking the best right now? Oh, I have so many exciting things that I do in my office that I really love. Uh, we do platelet injections. We do regenerative cell amniotic injections. We have a laser that we use for pain, for toenails. We have dermal fillers that we use in the feet to plump up the feet when there's a fat pad loss. We have an aesthetic nail product that we actually apply to this. Just so many things. Wow. And it's just fun. That's fun stuff for me that that I mean I love doing surgery I was trained as a surgeon I love being in the operating room but my business is more productive and more larger profit margin with uh, this more advanced technology and so not only does my practice do better from a practice management standpoint but my patients get better quicker they don't have the potential recovery time from a surgery or the downtime or the awful work time uh, the, the results are stronger. The results are longer lasting for a lot of different conditions. So uh, we do a lot of advertising uh, through social media for those different types of advanced technologies. Ah, uh, okay. That, that's great. I like the way you connected the advanced technologies with the social media and talking about that. Yeah. So when we, when we, one of the first things that we uh, offered about 10 years ago was platelet injection therapy. Mm -hmm. So we did huge social media uh, work up on that. And then a few years later, we started working with different types of amniotic uh, cells. And so we did a huge social media production uh, ramp up of that. Uh, we have the, our laser that we've used for about 10 years. Uh, and we did that through social media. We have a really amazing technology on how to treat warts, which is thrilling. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we've done that through social media. And that is when people are looking, you know, when you're looking up warts.com or warts on Google, a lot of people are looking for, okay, what's the latest technology? Or they've tried everything at home or they've seen four other doctors and they're not getting better. Well, let's try something different, right? Yeah. Or people have heard of stem cells, right? Everybody knows what a stem cell is. Everybody knows what platelet therapy is but we're gonna present it to you so you know why we're using it. What's it used for? How is it going to work for you and your podiatry related problem? People mm. love it. Yeah, that's they, a, they love learning about it. They, it's, they, they see that it's not just the old, uh, you know, everybody gets a cortisone injection for everything. You yep. know, it's, it's just not that more. It's more advanced things, better outcomes, longer lasting results. And they wanna read about that. They wanna learn about it. And then they give us a call and they say, okay, I heard that you offer this or you offer that. And I'm like, absolutely. 
let's you know be clear let's clarify any questions you have let's talk it out pros and cons you know there's lots of different ways to skin a cat so pros and cons and and you just and you the patient you decide what you want to do yeah that, that's great you know, that's great i kind of got through i'm past the point where i'm telling patients here's what you need for the most part i mean obviously if they're going to lose a life or limb i'm making decisions for them but or i'm guiding them to make decisions but I used to treat things like, okay, you have plantar fasciitis, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. But now I feel like with all the different choices of advanced technologies, I say, well, we can do it the traditional older fashioned way. You're gonna get results, you're gonna like your results. Here's what that might cost you. Or we can do with the advanced technology, you're gonna love the results better, you're gonna love them longer. Here's what that's gonna cost you. And we just let them decide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Uh, let's go to the next question. What have you been your biggest successes and failures? What hasn't worked when you're talking about referrals to your practice? Oh, so, so this is kind of embarrassing, but you're going to get me to tell it, Don. So when I started practice, of course, I was just coming out of my residency. It was a two-year residency. There weren't that many two-year residencies back then. I just thought I was the best thing since sliced bread, and I could turn a flat foot into a normal foot. I could take this tendon and reroute it through the leg into this area of the foot. I could do anything, anything. And I went to primary care docs and I told them that, look, I can reconstruct this. I can reconstruct that. I can make this leg longer. I can make this leg shorter. I could, blah, 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 you know, and they looked at me like, are you kidding? You're a podiatrist. You don't know, how, you know, uh, we're going to send you our nail trims. That's, that's the response I got over and over. And, uh, which is fine. I don't mind cutting toenails, especially when I have, you know, I'm new. I, I, I want to be busy. Yep. And, uh, so the honest truth is that I was at a local Academy of podiatry meeting and one of my colleagues, Dr. Patrick Noonan, to whom I probably owe my professional career came up to me and told me that he had heard that this is how I was presenting myself to these primary care docs. And he said, if you want to make it in this area, you're going to tone it down. He didn't say quite those kind of terms, but he made it very clear. And so then I just literally changed my whole approach once I swallowed my pride and I went to the primary care docs and I said, I can cut your toenails. I can cut your corns and calluses, you know, and I kind of presented it in a less aggressive way because primary care docs are that they are primary care. They don't want to hear that you're going to send their patient into the operating room for a six month recovery process. They want to hear that their patients are going to feel better quick. And mm -hmm. so I really got humbled there in the beginning wow. and yeah. I'm grateful, but that was my hugest failure was I was too cocky, too confident, too aggressive yeah. in the face of a primary care docs. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that's something that didn't work. What are some things that gave you great success? Maybe because what I consider success when you're talking about referrals, it, it could be that individual patient referring their friends and family, but there are some people that they just, ref, either a person refers tons or a certain other, other means. So I do a lot of lecturing around town. I do a lot of lecturing to bigger groups. So I might talk to either a diabetic support group or an arthritic support group or a group of Parkinson's uh, patients. And once I'm in there, it's not that it's not so much for me, the individual patient that refers a lot, but it's huge groups of people who are like, Oh my gosh, she knows what she's talking about. Look at all the different things she treats and look at what all she offers. And um, look how quick she can get me into her office. There's just so many factors that I think when you talk to and you have a personality that, that is accepted, uh, and that's me, whatever it is. I don't, I don't mean my personality is any better or worse than the next guy, but uh, I really feel like I connect best with large groups of people. And then I just get ongoing referrals. And then a year later, they ask me to come back and talk again, uh, to their group. And, and there's new patient, new people in that group by then. Uh, so that, that's huge for me. Um, of course, I have patients who think I walk water, which I do not, but you know, I get the patient every once in a while who just uh, loves sending patients to me. Uh, those, what I call premier patients, I send them gifts uh, that you are do. reasonable. Yes, I do, uh, but they have to be reasonable. You're not allowed to buy, you're not allowed to buy referrals, and I understand that, but I might send them a something, so a, a coffee shop gift card, a, a bouquet of flowers for their birthday, 
uh, an anniversary uh, gift card to dinner somewhere, you know, if I know these big events are coming in their life. So I want to acknowledge them and I want to be, show them my thankfulness of, of sending. So if I have a patient who sends five or more patients in a year, which I have many, uh, then they, then I want to do something for them too. How do you track that? Do you, did your staff, do you have a tracking system? I like the systems behind because things don't happen unless we have systems. Right, right. So we have a, so we've been computerized for about uh, 18 years and we uh, have on there, no, no new patient is allowed in my office until, uh, is allowed to be in the treatment room until my desk ascertains how did you hear about our practice. And so then we have a tracking system on our uh, electronic medical records. And then every three months I run a report and that report tells me how many patients has each patient sent. Wow. That's great. Mm -hmm. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's worth the people listening. That's, that's wonderful. Good. I think, you know, it's, 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 you have to know where your patients are coming from because I want to make sure that I'm spending my money. If I'm spending money on advertising, I want to make sure it's worth it. So I have one magazine that I now still advertise in. I used to advertise in several, uh, but only one was really returning my money for me on a, on a, on a level that I wanted. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm spending my money properly on social media and on my travels and on my going out to talk to people, which I do for free, but there's travel time, there's time away from the practice. So I wanna make sure that there's a good return on my investment. And the only way to know that isn't, you know, think it or ego it or, oh, everybody loves me. It's tracking it, it's black and white. Yeah, cause you're not, not every patient's gonna tell you where they come. You don't have time to ask about that. So it has to have a system. That but happens before the patient enters my treatment room, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's great. Going back to systems, because I, I like systems here. When you went and visited the doctors starting morning, noon, and night, did you block like an hour and a half? And did you have a list that you kind of went down the list in order? Or how did you determine? So initially, I would, when I started practice, I would practice from 9 until 11 and then 1 until 4. So that gave me time in the morning and noon and evening to meet uh, primary care docs or give lectures, give presentations. And... Um, uh, I forget the second half of your question, but I, I did, you, did you have a list of doctors? How, did you go in oh, yeah. order? How did you do it? So I would get the names of the doctors initially from patients who would come in to see me. So back then we had this thing called the newspaper and we advertised in the newspaper. And so patients would come in through the newspaper ad and, um, you know, if they had Dr. Smith, I would go out and meet Dr. Smith. If their family doc was Dr. Apple, I would go, I would call up Dr. Apple. Hey, I'm new in town. I'd like to meet you. I'm seeing your patient, Jill Smith. Um, I'd like to meet you. Yeah. And so I had like a connection. I would use that patient's name as a, hey, I'm not just pulling your name out of a hat. I saw uh, your patient. Correct, exactly, yes. That's great. Mm -hmm. And uh, these, are, these are, I don't think the, if the students or other doctors that are listening, they don't know the value. And just so everyone knows, I, I'm gonna put a link underneath the video to your article. That explains a lot of it too, if that's okay with you. Your article. Sure. That's a good one. Absolutely. Um, let's go on now. Uh, what's working well right now regarding referrals? Anything kind of using technology or, or new or that you're excited about or even future things that don't exist yet that you'd like that you're interested in? Well, what is that? I don't know. I want to know what's in the future because I'm, <laughs> I'm always willing to learn. I think that right now our strongest uh, thing that I like is our uh, website and our Facebook page. We, we're not really all that strong on Twitter, which I'm kind of embarrassed about because that seems like we should be. Um, but we ha we're always changing what's on our website. We're always updating that. We're reaching out to people, people through Facebook that we do a lot of. And I've kind of shifted recently my monies that I spend on Facebook to more advertising so that it's more targeted to the local community. I was getting initially, when we were getting more and more ramped up in Facebook, I was getting a lot of hits from like Zimbabwe or, you know, places I don't even, you know, surely I'm not going to have a patient coming from there. So uh, we're spending more money on targeting the local communities, specifically a five mile radius from each of my office locations. So if we, I believe that with the density of people that I have around my offices and the density of podiatrists around those offices, that probably a good 90, 85% of my patients are coming from a five mile radius. And so I want to do more advertising in that area. Uh, and that is the same, about the same radius that this magazine that I advertise in um, uh, sends to. So it's, I, I'm not, I don't want to do like 
There's a magazine in my area, which is Cincinnati, called Cincinnati Magazine. I have a colleague who I respect highly who advertises in Cincinnati Magazine. But there's so many podiatrists in this area. There's got to be 100 podiatrists in the greater Cincinnati area. I just can't believe that someone's going to read, a, read about a, something in Cincinnati Magazine and travel all the way to that other side of town to see that doctor, right? So I want to target my advertising to the area that I believe is most likely going to come and see me. Yeah. How, how successful have you been at gathering? Because uh, through reviews, do reviews help you out? Do you have a, a system of doing reviews? You know, it'd be awesome if every person that was happy and told me they were happy would do a positive review. That'd be amazing, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't get that. We get, uh, you know, the ones that are unhappy sometimes. Sorry, I'm going to turn that phone off there. And, uh, you know, it, it's harder to reach out and ask for, not harder you have to reach out and ask for a positive review. You, you have to do that. So we're in a system now, you like systems, where every patient who leaves on their way out, we hand them a card that has our website, has the uh, Google review uh, um, address on there. And we ask them, hey, you know what? We've taken a few moments to make you happy. Can you take a few seconds to make us happier? And we ask them to do a review. Uh, and then there are, so I've, I've actually had patients say to me, oh my gosh, someone gave you a negative review? How did that happen? And I'm like, well, that's why I need more of you, right? So we, we get our occasional negative review, but we have so many happy patients. But even them, you have to ask. Don't be afraid to ask because they have a hundred things on their mind. Their first priority isn't your first priority, right? Yeah. Their first priority is getting to do whatever activity they want to do or go on to the next task that they have to accomplish that day. I just ask them to give me a second to make us happier. We've made you happy today. Can you take a second to make us happy? Uh, and they're like, oh, sure, yes. So, that's great. Um, yeah, I think reviews are good. Reviews are positive, And that helps keep us also on top of the search engine. Yeah. Uh, my social media guru tells me that's important. So uh, yeah. I ask my patients yeah. to like us on Facebook. And I don't just hang a sign up in my office because everybody's seen the sign with the big F on it. And no, nobody does that. So I ask them, you know, hey, while we're sitting here before we, before you leave the treatment room today, would you mind just liking me on Facebook? I mean, what are they going to do? Say no to this face? No. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, great, Chris. I, I think we've covered a lot of things. I think we can close up now. And uh, any, any last things that are in your mind that you'd like to share? Last tips? You shared great tips. I want to say this to all the docs out there, new, especially the new docs. You can do this. You can go out, you can build your practice. It's going to take time. It's going to take work, but you have to believe in yourself. And once you believe in yourself, everybody else is going to believe in you. It's fun. Enjoy, enjoy your occupation that you've chosen. I love podiatry and I want everybody to have fun doing it. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Chris Titko. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey guys, thank you for watching Healthy Living. You're going to find a few links here I'd like you to click. One is to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Uh, also, you can learn more. There are some videos here you can see.